uh, as far as I know, a lot of uh, I spoke to some people, at some of the other broadcasters that are here, like they've been told that they're not to film literally one bit of his training. Okay. He, doesn't, he doesn't really want people in there outside the team. Okay. Um, even watching his training. So they've kept everything right under lock. One, the only, Mr. IFL TV, Coogan Cassius. <laughs> What's going on, Cooks? <laughs> Dream it, believe, believe it, it, become, become it, it. <laughs> believe it, believe it, become it again, come on, come and, again. And, again. and again, and again, and again, and again. You know the set. <laughs> How we doing, Coog? What's happening? Yes, sir. Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Coogan, what's going on? I'm blessed, highly favoured, even oh, better. Here, yeah. I'm blessed and I'm highly favoured and even better for speaking to you, my friend. He says that to the rent man. <laughs> he says that's the lad. That's the lad he says to the mortgage man. As well, it's all good. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about because I don't pay rent in my house. I, I own my house. But anyway, that's good movie. We're not aggressive. Uh, why why did he have to say that, Kook? Why, sh- why? Why? You so, shut up, Tony. Kook, why did he have to say? There was no need for that. Oh, of course, I have to tell you. <laughs> There's no rent in my house. <laughs> anyway, come on, let's be serious. Coog, you still there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Coogan. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Right. Big fight week, weighing, coming up and everything else. You've interviewed both guys, right? You've interviewed Deontay Wilder, you've interviewed... No, no, couldn't interview Wilder yesterday. He didn't do a lot of media interviews. He, he didn't? He slipped off right after the press up. No. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Obviously, done Fury, but uh, yeah, no Wilder as of yet. Right. What's Tyson Fury's energy like? Because I saw the interview that you did with him yesterday. It was a very, very good interview. Um, what What's his energies like? Do you know what? <laughs> Probably similar to any other fight week, especially over like the last few fights in Vegas. Just chilled out. Just the team's different but it still feels the same they're just they're all in a house together and they're just when they're not obviously doing their bit of training this week they've still been going to the gym and that uh but when they're away from that and the media stuff i've been over the house a couple of times and it's just it's just chilled it's he's chilled i think he's got good like influences around him that kind of keep him sane if you like and um yeah, it's just, it's no, to be honest with you, it's no different. Like, if you didn't know he was fighting Wilder, you wouldn't think that he was having a big fight this week because he is that chilled. So he seems very relaxed. Yeah. I think he seems relaxed. Like I said, the, outside of the media circus, because it is a bit of a circus around this, mm. uh, okay. when it's kind of stripped down and they're just at the house and there's probably about 10 of them in the house, um, it just, he seems chilled and just, like normal, normal fury away from everything. So that's what I was gauging sort of from being there a couple of times. So have you got to see um, Tyson Fury do any training? Because I know you've been out there, what, two weeks? What? I haven't been here two weeks. Yeah, I've only been, been here six days. No, it, I've only been okay. here six days. Okay, well, it seems like I'm just seeing your Instagram stuff. I thought you was out there longer. What Have you seen Tyson Fury do any work inside of the camp? No, do, do you know what? I'll be honest with you, that's something that's really been kept under lock and key. Uh, mm. Even training. for the great Coogan Cassius? Yeah, even for... But to be honest with you, I haven't been to the gym. I've only okay. been to the house and I've been to the gym because I, I, I've only been here, like I said, five, six days. Right. So uh, as far as I know, a lot of... Uh, I spoke to some people, some of the other broadcasters that are here, like, They've been told that they're not to film literally one bit of his training. Okay. He, he doesn't really want people in there outside the team. Okay. Um, even watching his training. So they've kept everything right under lock uh, mm. for this camp. And I don't blame them as well. Why Why? Why do you need to kind of uh, well, risk what, what, was that? Like? So, was, th- was that the same thing they'd done when Ben Davison was in control? Mm, not... <laughs> I'm just going back to the first fight, and yes. obviously the first fight was in LA, and the setup was a little bit different. Yeah, because I was uh, in the, by the time I got there. They... Sorry, I was there. I was in the Say gym. I was in the gym with them because obviously we was doing in the September, and he was supposed to be on that bill. So 
we were cool. we were upstairs and we was training in the hotel and yeah, I guess so. Yeah, there was nobody there apart from us and and the team. So it it, it was a bit of a different like environment that because here because Vegas is like yeah so on circus. top and they've had to put themselves away like twenty minutes thirty minutes away from anywhere near the strip. The strip, yeah. And in LA, it's different. They spent uh, they were in the fight hotel during yes. the week. Yes. So it was a kind of a different setup then, but this just feels like they're literally not risking anything with any, with anything and not taking any chances and just kind of literally head down, let's get the job done mentality. Mm-hmm. Similar to how kind of Joshua approached that Ruiz fight as well. Just, yes. You know, obviously do your media stuff and that, but just focus on, on, on what you need to do on Saturday. And I do get that feel that they've, they're taking this very seriously, which they always would, the whole team. Right, so what do you think of this Sugar Hill who's, who's coming now? Um, how I don't know. Listen, if Tyson, win, if Tyson wins, it's like genius, master stroke, decision uh, to bring in Sugar Hill. Um, if it doesn't go his way, then people are, you know, you know what people are like. They'll be like, oh, shouldn't have got rid of Ben and blah, 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 blah. It's just the world we live in. I mean, it doesn't work like that. But obviously... He's worked with Sugar Hill in the past before, from like seven, eight years ago. Not to this kind of magnitude, but he still has. But they are vaguely or somewhat familiar with each other. Sugar, um, I was just saying to but, myself, Sugar Hill, it, it might be Salt Mountain. <laughs> Salt Mountain. <laughs> After Saturday night convert, this guy is a lot of pressure on Sugar Hill as well. Listen, he don't, he don't, listen there's a lot of pressure on him. It's not a joke. Is you it, know, it, of course, it, it causes pressure. Of and I know you know why I know it's pressure because when I knew Sugar Hill when he came over here, and uh, what was it? Come on, Spence. It was, I know what you're gonna say. He had hair on his head. <laughs> <laughs> when <laughs> when Anthony Smalls fought Water right, yeah, Water in the, right in the UK versus USA contenders. Sugar Ray K Jones Jr. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> muppet, right? <laughs> right? Alright, don't Sh- say that. Sh- I've said it. I don't. Mean- <laughs> anyway, good. Right, he's a muppet. Anyway, and Sh- and Sugar Hill had hair then, so I know the pressure's on him right now <laughs> because since he's got this job, he start losing his hair. <laughs> but, but yeah, you're right, Coog. You know. um, Tyson wins the fight. He's the best thing since sliced bread. You know? Yeah, it's as cutthroat as that. Yes. It's as cutthroat as that. He, if he pulls it off, it's the right decision. If it doesn't, people start questioning, you know, uh, whether they had enough time to never was the split with Ben, was, you know, should that have happened or, or what? So, but people are always going to say this anyway. So Absolutely. They know this. So he thinks he believes that He's making the right decision yes. uh, in the lead up to this fight. So we That's what trust it is. his judgment mm-hmm. and we'll but, see what happens. But what I want to know is what Coogan's decision is. <laughs> what is your verdict you of the fight? You ain't going to give No, what do you mean? Coogan's going to give us the verdict. Come on. Because okay. I'm going to, after, you, after no, whatever comes out of your mouth, I'm going down William Hill and make, make him a bet. <laughs> whatever no, comes out of your I, mouth, I, come I on, Coogan. I, I guarantee you. Bro, Coog- the only way you're going to make any money on this, yeah, so is go, a draw. Draw. Go draw. Go yeah. draw again. 20, 22 or 23 to 1. Yeah. Wow. How did Tyson Fury get you know up? What? How did, hold on. How did Tyson Fury get up from that 12th round knockout? Not down. How? The good Lord. The good Lord. My Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Man, he's a dunk. Something, something got him up. Incredible. That is normal. The that will. Is that's normal. the willpower. That's the willpower. So, okay. So you, you feel that a draw is a good bet, or the, 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 the you didn't actually say a it's a draw is a good bet, but yeah. listen, it is the chances of a draw occurring twice in the spin is probably highly unlikely. But I think if you really think about it, no one's a hundred percent convinced what they know is going to happen in this fight. You don't. True. You might favour one, but you can see two or three situations happening. The only situation you probably don't favour is Wilder to outpoint Fury. I think that's the more <coughs> unrealistic of. The four or five ways it can go, but any anything else ain't going to be that much. That's of a, a shot. very that's a very good assessment. To me, it's going to well. I, I actually add to that. To me, it's a shock if Fury KOs Wilder. Spencer doesn't think that. I think that, that Fury yeah, can that's stop next him. On the list. No, I know, I but I really think that Fury could stop. I don't think he could knock him out. I think he could stop him bludgeoning him with shots. That's what I believe. See, even the twelfth round. When they're saying he hurt Deontay, was that exhaustion or was that really he hurt him? 
it looked like he stunned him to me. But I think I think I think the fatigue of going into the twelfth round and him shooting his bolt played yeah. a factor in it as well. But regardless of that, um, I it looked to me that Tyson Fury stunned him. Mm. Mm. That's what it looked like to me. We're watching the fight as we're speaking to you, Kook. So that's what I believe. We're gonna keep on going over it and going over it and going over it. Kook and Cassius, but, go on. Yeah, mate. Go on. No, 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 no. I, I, no, yeah, mate. I would. I, I, mm, this fight is it is a close one to call, cool, Coop. You got to admit. You got to admit. And as you say, it is so close to call cool because you just like I said, you can picture out different situations what could happen, but you can't honestly say I am convinced that this will happen or <laughs> yeah. convinced that you can't honestly in your heart say that anything could happen. We don't know. Look, we wouldn't have predicted how that first fight would have gone. I mean, what the. The sequence of events that led into the 12th round and just everything about that. One of the most dramatic fights has been in years. Um, maybe not entertaining like rounds 1 to 12, but mm. drama-wise, I mean, you're not going to beat that. But we don't know leading into the how this is going to go. And this is, what, this is why we're all intrigued about this fight. This is why, you know, was Fury after two fights against Tefri and Pianetta coming in and, and that shocked us all. That was the biggest shock that that fight even fucking happened. That's but that was like, no one really, when it was called, thought this fight, is it going to happen? It did happen. Like 14 months later, Fury's been in the ring a little bit more active. Um, so, there's no excuses now, is there? There's no, you know, oh, Fury's been out of the ring for this long and blah, 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 blah. This is two fighters at their peak. Mm. Rock on. Yes, sir. Well, Kook, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your expert advice and opinions. Yep. Um, Tony's got one question to ask you. What was that? <laughs> ask the question. This right here, Tony. <laughs> Hold on, wait there. Um, why did you, this I always say to, why did you give Spencer the name, the knowledge? Tell me that. That's what I want to know. Why? That's what the fight, the right, right, for the fight is right. <coughs> Listeners want to know. Why give him this name, the knowledge? Well, I'll be honest with you. Years ago, back in the day, okay. <laughs> so, you, Spence, you remember? You know when, like, we was at I filmed London, yeah. Yep. Yes, big. we used to we used to write a credit underneath the name of the person who were interviewed. Mm. Like now, we don't do that because now, like, if you don't, the the name of the person is in the title, so like that's what it is. But that was before. So I used to like give a couple of nicknames to people. And I thought, you know, like, if you ask Spencer uh, the directions to the nearest shop, <laughs> and then Spencer starts saying, well, in 1944, <laughs> this shop was actually called Smith. And then in 53, it changed to uh, Johnson. And, uh, and, and that's the history of that shop. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, you done doing it. This Come man on. knows... Everything. And you know the best thing about Spencer, yeah? Yeah. Spencer knows his shit, and I know Spencer knows his shit <laughs> in his story. But even if Spencer didn't, yeah, Spencer's like, probably could throw in a couple of random boxes from like <laughs> if, 1942. 32. Like, you know, you remember that old black heavyweight, you know, John, John Jones Donovan. You remember him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone would be like, yeah, I remember him. Guy, yeah, yeah, sick yeah. Heavyweight. yeah. <laughs> and they wouldn't even question it. That's yeah. why Spence has got himself in that position. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, but the, the thing about it is, a lot, a lot of people think I, they, oh yeah, every, especially I, I get a lot of abuse on IFL. If I'm, wrong, I'm calling everything under, under the sun, it doesn't matter. They, they, these people are so dumb, they don't know they're giving me energy. Yeah, they're yeah. calling my name, you're making me relevant. Yeah. But they say, I just want to clarify this. I did not give myself the name of knowledge. <laughs> I said, no, you did. I wrote it on a video. Thank you very That's much. much. There I you go. Right. On a video. Right. It's official. Right. Years it's official. Ago, I'm talking eight, like the first couple of times I interviewed it. Right, that's so serious. and so so that's that. So when people said, "Oh yeah, you yeah, the self-appointed knowledge," what does he know? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I'm saying no. Cooking Cash but, has interviewed thousands Tundi, of people. Tundi, I will say that you you brand yourself a genius. So yes, sir. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I ain't and I ain't taking it back either. <laughs> How you like that one? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cooking. Big up yourself. The yeah? big, the one, the only, the yeah. infamous. 
Mr. AFL TV, Coogan Cassius, it's been a pleasure. Big up, yeah, Coos. Thanks Thank for jumping on the show, much. yeah. Thank Love you. Sir. Thank you. No problem. And we'll, we'll talk soon, yeah? Yes, Bye, bruv. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the Stamina for Soul YouTube channel.